Hello, thanks for joining me on Life and Surround. Today is a video by request. I've gotten uh, quite a few requests lately, and I'm going to try to address the ones that I remember. So first of all, if you're interested in a Life and Surround t-shirt, they exist. They're up on my eBay store, and I will leave links below. You get either the gold logo on a black or white t-shirt, or the more woodcut looking logo on a heather green or heather gray t-shirt. Let me know if you would prefer some other colors or other ideas for merchandise. Uh, buying from my eBay store does benefit this channel. Um, it's a very modest profit, so I appreciate um, any of you that choose to support the channel in that way. And if you have a Life & Surround t-shirt, I want to see you out in the wild wearing it. Like, snap some selfies, snap some snapshots, and uh, post them in the comments or send them to me, uh, Facebook page, however you feel like it. But I'd like to see you in those shirts. And secondly, I've been asked whether people can request album reviews, and the answer is definitely yes. I may or may not be in the mood for a particular album, and I may or may not have it. You can check my Discogs collection, which should give you a pretty good idea of what I have. Edison Baggins is my username, and I uh, will link that as well. But uh, requests are definitely welcome, and they're a lot of fun. And um, if you're kind of feeling out my vibe, and have some intuition toward what I would like to review, and I have it, or if it's like some mega expensive deluxe set only type of thing, maybe we can start a, a Kickstarter or something. Uh, we'll, we'll work it out, all right? You can mail me your disc and I'll mail it back, whatever. So re requests, thumbs up. All right, and then um, I've been asked lately to do some comparisons if a certain album exists uh, across multiple formats and particularly somebody called out Toy Matinee, and I happen to have both formats for that mix. And so, uh, yes, uh, some shootouts are coming up, and uh, I'm gonna get to that at the end of this video. All right, and so finally, this video fulfills a request. Uh, somebody recently asked a lot of questions about the various surround disc formats that are available, and so, worst to best, in terms of like assuming that you have a good recording, a good mix, a good master, which formats are going to showcase that audio quality the best? We're going to go from worst to best, and I bet I'm going to present at least one format that's going to be a surprise to you. All right, so here we go. Worst to best, and uh, one caveat. In my opinion, music is all about whether you enjoy it, and every single one of these formats that I'm going to show you are enjoyable, all right? To some people, some of the time, there may be people who only want to listen to lossless, ultra-high resolution, ultra-high, you know, bit rate. Uh, I know of releases across all formats that are dissatisfying, and conversely, releases across all formats that are satisfying, all right? And so I'm gonna show you some pretty good examples, in my opinion, of all the formats. All right, so here we go. First off, we have Dolby Surround CDs. Uh, I'm pretty sure that some of you out there don't even know that these exist. Uh, this is one of my favorites. It's a Star Trek symphonic soundtrack uh, tribute and this brings up another point. People have asked, like, what is the best way to play back certain formats? And the answer mainly is to leave your receiver in direct mode and to set your player to bitstream so that you are just getting the raw information into your AVR and your AVR simply plays what it is receiving. It doesn't add any kind of effects any kind of magic. Now these Dolby Surround CDs are an exception. They are, first and foremost, a simple RBCD, a Red Book CD. And if you leave your system in direct mode, 
it's going to play this in stereo. In Redbook CD 44.1 slash 16 stereo. However, if you choose whatever proprietary Dolby codec that you have on your system, like PL2, PL2X, uh, that stands for ProLogic, uh, even the original ProLogic, the yay old Dolby Surround from the 90s, I believe, will work, and then the brand new, also dubbed Dolby Surround will definitely work. So it will split this into kind of a diamond quad format. You get a center, a front left and right, and then a mono rear. And these are very cool. I have several of them. Uh, once upon a time I was trying to hunt them down just on a lark, but uh, for me the fidelity isn't quite there. You have Redbook CD uh, technology trying to, you know, provide a quad experience when I really think that uh, that technology is mainly best served limited to stereo, to just like mono or two tracks at the most. But anyway, Dolby Surround CD, these exist and they are quite a bit of fun. All right, so moving on, moving on, we have DTS CDs. If DTS and Dolby can be considered competitors, and I think that's fair enough, this may have been their response to Dolby Surround CDs. Uh, you are still working with Redbook CD technology, so these are 44.1 slash 16 creations, but they managed to split them into six channels. And to do so, you are getting uh, less bandwidth and less uh, you know, resolution available per channel. So you may be able to kind of think of this as the MP3 of surround, uh, though there are examples of DTS CDs that sound amazing. And I'm showing you like the one that everyone talks about. This is Lyle Lovett, Joshua Judges Ruth. There are other DTS CDs that sound pretty damn good, but this one sounds amazing. Now, if they were to re-release the same mix and master on a Blu-ray, would it sound better? It's possible, because now you uh, are dealing with higher resolution and uh, lossless technology. So this is definitely uh, compressed for size, and um, but Based on that limitation, it's possible that there were DTS engineers involved in this project who just absolutely knew what they were doing because this DTS CD is a must here. It's a must here. Could it be improved? It's possible. But does it sound just absolutely stellar? It sure does. And uh, the thing that I would say about DTS CD, because I have had the opportunity to sample quite a few, is that some of them don't sound so great. So this one I do recommend. Joshua Judges Ruth. You need it in your collection, for sure. All right, now, moving along. I'm not sure that this next one is exactly an upgrade over DTS CD, but at least you get higher resolution. You still get quite a bit of uh, size compression. And uh, so I'm gonna show you Wanted by RPWL. Now this band is interesting. Over the years they have released quite a few 5.1 albums and uh, they've done so across DVD video, Super Audio CD, and now um, DVD video again. And like one of their previous releases was DTS, uh, either 48K or 96K. And now this one is Dolby Digital, constrained to 48K and heavily compressed for size. So again, we're talking kind of like a surround MP3. This is a mid 90s technology and why somebody would release it on like a circa 2018, 2019 album is beyond me, except maybe like the album was mastered and the disc was authored for free and the only thing their buddy had a license for was Dolby Digital. I don't know why a decision like this would be made. 
I put out my own indie Blu-ray and easily made back my money. Uh, so I just don't get it why some labels are still using Dolby Digital. Uh, but for what it's worth, the album is well recorded. Uh, in my opinion, it's musically uh, very cool. And though the uh, Dolby Digital definitely has, you know, kind of a, a muffled quality to it, you definitely uh, get the impression of what the album is like. I've listened to the CD in my car and uh, the Dolby 5.1 mix on my HTS and the the 5.1 mix here definitely gets the point across it just could be way better defined and uh, crisper and clearer in the right ways you know there are certain frequencies that come across a little smashed a little a little brittle so Anyway, so this is DVD video, and it's the Dolby Digital version of it. All right, so the only thing that you get on certain releases is Dolby Digital. All right, so then moving on, we have uh, the next highest tier of DVD video. We have DTS and Dolby Digital available on certain releases like Nick Cave and the Bad Seeds, Dig, Lazarus, Dig, and um, definitely promoting some favorite albums for you here. If you haven't heard Nick Cave and the Bad Seeds, Dig, Lazarus, Dig, either on Spotify, Tidal, CD, DVD video, whatever you gotta do, check out this album. It's basically like garage rock from an extremely uh, symbolic and emotive and picturesque very talented songwriter and the band is just rocking in his support this is such such a cool record I love it and in this you get DTS 48k which is called core DTS you get Dolby Digital 48k and you get stereo LPCM lossless 48k plus uh, some video footage, fan reaction style documentary footage, and bonus tracks, which are also in 5.1. So, very, very cool DVD video, sometimes tops out at DTS Core, okay? Moving along, you get some DVD videos, like Bebop Deluxe, Axe Victim. Ah, I love this record. I love this record. It's like Ziggy Stardust with, like, superior guitar shredding rather than being focused mostly on like the vocal and this like R&B early rock and roll vibe that supports a vocalist you definitely have um, some some good vocals and some good songs but like some times where uh, Bill Nelson just shreds his ass off on guitar Axe Victim and when you watch uh, this on your television monitor, the jaw like opens and closes and the strings vibrate on the skeleton guitar. It's just very cool. And so this disc does feature a Dolby Digital option. Like let's say that you have a DVD player that can't play DTS. You can choose the Dolby Digital option. But it also has DTS Extended if your equipment, like a Blu-ray player or like a later DVD player, can handle DTS Extended, you get 96K from your DTS option. And I'm pretty sure that it is backwards compatible with Core DTS. So if you have like a middle era DVD player that can only handle Core DTS, it'll play it back in 48K. So again, some DVD videos uh, came with um, the option to go all the way up to DTS Extended. 96K, so you know, if you're canine <laughs> and you can hear stuff uh, way up in that range, you wanna check out some extended DTS, okay? And again, you get lossless stereo on here, the Dolby Digital option and uh, DTS option as well. And I wholeheartedly recommend this album. The only way to get the 5.1 mix is in this deluxe set, but Bebop Deluxe, I think, keep their prices pretty reasonable. 
especially if you work with a discounter. I don't remember what I paid for this, but it was probably like in the $50 range. All right, so well worth it in my opinion. Now, moving into the lossless formats. For you audiophiles out there, of which I'm not, but I do prefer lossless when I can get it. This is the section of the video for you. All right, so we have DVD audio. And oh my word, those of you who are versed in uh, DVD audio quality across different labels, yes, I am showing you a Silver Line release. This is a Silver Line winner. Robert Cray, time will tell, my jaw dropped when I heard this 5.1 album. It's a must. Uh, it will be a mainstay for me. It will remain in rotation. And uh, so let's talk about DVD audio. Uh, you normally get a DVD video layer in case your player can't handle DVD audio. You'll get essentially a Dolby Digital option. So you'll be able to hear the album in 5.1 no matter what if you have a DVD player at all. And you can also choose a lossless stereo version of the album on most DVD audios. And then, um, as with this album, you can also choose Advanced Resolution slash DVD Audio, which is 96K slash 24-bit lossless audio, uh, normally presented in MLP, Meridian Lossless something something. All right, and then it might be worth noting that uh, in stereo and mono, DVD audios, I think, can go all the way up to 192K, all right? But for 5.1 or 5.0, uh, the resolution is capped at 96K, lossless. And DVD audio, for many, many reasons, is... Hmm, is it my favorite format? I think it's my favorite format. And this album kicks ass. So if you don't have Robert Cray, Time Will Tell, what you doing? What you doing? All right? All right? I'm trying to steer you right. All right, so let's move on uh, with something that I don't think necessarily surmounts DVD audio. So I'm not sure which one is like the, the best or the worst here, but it definitely contends for supremacy. It is Super Audio CD. Now this is an entirely different technology than anything else I'm going to talk about. Um, DVDs and Blu-rays, per my understanding, and don't quote me unless I'm right and correct me if I'm wrong, uh, are based on a PCM technology, where SACD is based on DSD. So when you hear me talk about stuff like 96k slash 24 bit, you get an entirely different ballgame with Super Audio CD. These things are one bit. One bit. So how can that possibly sound good? It's because these things throw sound at you, not in terms of kilohertz, but in terms of megahertz. You get like, uh, I think like 2000 and some change kilohertz. And so is that in the megahertz range, like 2800 kilohertz. I don't know. That's at least close to a megahertz, all right? I'm not that great at math, but I do know that SACDs throw a crap ton of samples at you and one bit at a time. And so in the like audio fidelity world, these are considered lossless, and they just sound superb to my ears. And so I definitely consider them a rival of DVD audio. And I'm showing you David Bowie's Heathen, which is one of my all-time favorite albums by anyone, no matter the format, no matter the mix. But certainly, in terms of my surround collection, this is one that you need to find no matter what, beg, steal, or borrow, swindle, deal, 
search, pay an arm and a leg, do what you gotta do. David Bowie's Heathen. It is later era Bowie, but it uh, does pay pretty heavy homage to his uh, earlier career, including reviving some old compositions and doing them finally on record for the first time. This is such a, such a, such a cool album, and it is truly a great mix. If you go on quadraphonicquad.com, if I remember correctly, this is rated very, very, very highly, and uh, in my opinion, very well deserved. I love Bowie, and I don't talk about him enough on this channel, so wanted to take this opportunity. Even. All right? All right, so now we're moving forward into the final format, in a way. All right, so we're going to move forward into discussing Blu-ray. Blu-ray. Now, the thing about it is that a Blu-ray is a Blu-ray is a Blu-ray. But uh, what certain like authoring engineers do with them can differ significantly, okay? So I'm gonna talk to you about a format called Blu-ray Audio. It is simply a Blu-ray, but it focuses on audio. It doesn't promise a feature-length film or um, anything like that, though Blu-ray Audio can contain video snippets. It's not, uh, you know, against the protocol or the format. But Blu-ray audio, the point is that you're getting um, a high fidelity, lossless album. And a uh, cool thing about Blu-ray, in terms of audio, is it can go as far down, I believe, as 44.1 kilohertz and as high as 192K and it can even handle 192K in full surround, um, up to 5.1. And again, don't quote me unless I'm right. But then um, if you go into some of the more immersive formats, you end up getting some lower resolution caps. All right, and we'll get to that in just a minute. But uh, Bob Marley, legend, mixed into 5.1 surround by Bob Clear Mountain. And I love to talk about Mr. Clear Mountain as often as I can. So Bob Marley's legend. I intend to uh, review this pretty soon, by the way. But I get a chance to briefly talk about it now. Uh, an incredible 5.1 album. It's a mainstay for me. And this is an example of Blu-ray audio where you're primarily getting high resolution, lossless stereo and surround audio. That's the point of the Blu-ray. Okay? Now, moving forward, we have an example of Blu-ray video. Now, in the DVD world, audio is better than video, but with Blu-ray video, you're getting the, the promise and the expectation of more video content, but you are not sacrificing the audio quality. Okay? Now, I'm not sure if you can still get surround at 192 with Blu-ray video, or maybe it caps it at 96, but here's the deal. Bottom line, you're getting lossless stereo and surround, and Blu-ray audio and video can go beyond 5.1, by the way. Uh, you can get 7.1, you can get 9.1, you can get 11.1, and when you get into those higher numbers, we're basically talking about Atmos or RO3D or DTS-X. They all can come on Blu-ray. And this here is Kraftwerk catalog. This uh, abridged version, which is a two-disc version, uh, where you get a DVD and a Blu-ray, and eight songs is sometimes called Numbers. And in my opinion, this is quite enough Kraftwerk for me. There was a four-disc set where you get like every single one of their albums re-recorded uh, live style, and you get the option to watch the band performing all songs or to just look at their backdrop videography. But this is the abridged version, it's uh, lovingly called Numbers. And not only is it one of the most incredible Atmos mixes that exists, and you get it lossless, unlike on Tidal where it's like super compressed. 
you get it lossless in Atmos and it's crazy. But if you are equipped for it, you can also watch this baby back in 3D, video 3D. So you get like uh, 3D sound and 3D video and it is just mind blowing. I love this disc, it's so much fun. Starts out with Autobahn, which reminds me of the Big Lebowski, Amy Mann and her uh, gang of nihilists who are in love with the band Autobahn. And you get the robots, the robots. This is just so much fun. I love it. And so it's an example of Blu-ray video, not necessarily superior to Blu-ray audio, but it, it does offer you the chance to watch like a, like a video feature and that can sometimes be more engaging in my opinion. All right, so closing out this video, the grand winner, the grand winner. You get uh, another example of Blu-ray audio, and I just wanted to bring up the fact that uh, some Blu-ray audio comes with RO3D, which is an amazing technology. It's a rival of Dolby Atmos, and some people consider it to be superior in terms of musicality. Um, it's not capped at 48K, which some Dolby Atmos releases are. It can go up to at least 96. In full, like 9.1, 11.1, you can get 96K. I have quite a few albums in RO3D that I am just in love with. And this is George McRae, Love. And, I don't know, I have kind of a complex relationship with love, but uh, this guy is the, the guru of love. He's a love wizard. And he will win you over. If you're jaded about love, you need to put on George McRae love uh, for at least, you know, the duration of this album. You will be a fan of love. And the uh, RO3D mix does not disappoint. It's super, super great. And I just wanted to have a chance to talk about Aro. I think in terms of immersive audio, meaning like beyond your your ground level surround mix, when you when you go up into those heights, when you when you're talking about a surround sphere instead of a surround circle, I really think that Aro 3D is the superior format, and you tend to get like some some funkier releases. I think that Dolby Atmos has managed to license itself for more popular stuff, but it's gems like this that make me super, super happy that RO3D exists because I wouldn't know about George McRae if it weren't for uh, RO3D. Oh, his caption on the bottom of this is the worldwide ambassador of love. And that is just like so true. These things often come in like a slip sleeve. I don't know. I just love it. I completely dig it. I completely dig it. So this has been a uh, sort of a quick and dirty rundown on surround disc formats and uh, otherwise known as optical. So if you hear the word digital, it typically refers to files. So FLAC files uh, would be an example of digital and anything that has been authored onto a disc because it takes you know a laser to optically read the disc that's why we refer to discs as optical now i said that um i'm going to be doing some shootouts soon and i'm going to start with what i hope will be an interesting shootout toy matinee was released on dvd audio and dts cd and uh, i've had the dts cd for quite a long time it was actually before I knew the difference between a DTS CD and a DVD audio. I figured, you know, a audio disc is an audio disc. And I happened to see this one for a pretty good price. And come to find out because of their rarity, uh, you can sometimes spend more for the DTS CD than for the DVD audio. But I am going to do, coming up soon, a blind listen where I'm blindfolded and someone else is uh, messing with the the audio player and they're gonna play one version and then the other and I'm going to make notes about what I like and what I don't 
And I've done a non-blind listen in the past, and so I know what I prefer in that sense. But we're going to see what happens when I do a blind listen, and um, I don't need a good excuse to listen to Toy Matinee. And a good excuse is helpful uh, for listening to it twice in a row, but I'm looking forward to that. Uh, this is a magnificent album with excellent songwriting and excellent musicians, and I'll get into that more during the shootout review, okay? And then also coming up, which may be like uh, a more interesting comparison because the formats might rival each other a little more closely, Anathema Distant Satellites, one of my favorite kind of uh, new pop, metal, proggy, whatever kind of bands, uh, the K-Scope label. I thought incorrectly a while ago that I had sold my only DVD video version. So this is um, Lossy 5.1 Surround, but in Japan they released the album on Blu-ray audio. So lossless 5.1. So again, I'm going to do a blind listen and make some notes and uh, just honestly tell you what I think. And so then the point would be like, you know, because Blu-ray is lossless and in theory can also go to a uh, higher resolution, like if the Blu-ray is more expensive, is it worth it? Or should you just be perfectly happy as a clam with the DVD video? All right, so there's some shootouts coming up. I hope you have enjoyed this video. I hope you have found it helpful. If you have uh, comments or questions about how to play these things. Oh, like I said, for for Dolby Surround CD, you need to set your AVR to Dolby Surround or some iteration of that. For the other formats, I recommend setting your equipment to Direct and uh, Bitstream Direct and just allow yourself to hear without effects, without manipulation, what the engineer intended. So if you want to take 5.1 and upmix it into Atmos or RO or Neo or whatever you have available, go for it. But I recommend uh, getting in touch with what the engineer intended first. And so for most formats, your, your AVR is going to do a pretty good job of guessing uh, the desired playback method. Like if you put in a DTS disc, it's going to begin playing it in DTS. But uh, to just ensure that there's no mistakes in the signal chain, I like to set my gear to direct. And there's even pure direct if you want to shut off like the video circuits. And uh, some AVRs claim that that gives you a superior sound. But uh, yeah, I just wanted to bring that up that for some formats, you can get by with an older DVD player. For other formats, you need a more modern DVD player. And then obviously for Blu-ray audio, you need a Blu-ray player. And that's often going to cover down on DVD audio, but sometimes not Super Audio CD. So if you want to be able to play everything that I just showed you, you pretty much need to find an oppo or a similarly classed universal Blu-ray player. And uh, like I have a Sony X800 that's pressed into service in my media room. It handles family movie time and it handles my Atmos and RO system. And then in here in my dedicated quad full range slash uh, 5.1 system, I use my Oppo BDP 103 and I do that via HDMI. If you want an analog situation, you need to go with a 105 or a 205 and those are becoming very very pricey so if you don't have an oppo or you want an upgrade or a backup i would go get one now because oppo is still in business but they're not making blu-ray players all right so i hope uh like i said that this has been informative enjoyable don't forget to like subscribe ring the notification bell go grab a t-shirt if you're so inclined uh, all of that kind of thing helps support this channel, and it's much appreciated because I appreciate you. I love uh, making these videos, listening to this wonderful music, and interacting with you. 
I've made some wonderful, wonderful friends over the years uh, doing this channel, including Elad, who helped supply a lot of the information that you heard today. So I appreciate you. I hope you are living your best life and that you're living life in surround.